Good morning. Butch Eichels, the Country Church, Marion, Texas. A short drive to worship the Lord in a relaxed atmosphere. We didn't, uh, I don't think we had any rain this last week, so what are y'all talking about? Uh, we got plenty of seats. Wow, it's good to see everybody. Welcome this morning to the Country Church. Welcome those viewing via live stream as well as those who are listening on the radio. Um, the text for today's message is found in the 12th chapter of John. Um, you ready for Jesus' last crusade? Yes, sir. All right, let's read about it. Beginning at verse 44 of John chapter 12, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the reminder in your word that you love the world so much that you did not send a judge. You sent a Savior. And Father, we are so grateful because we needed saving. And we are grateful for that act, that generosity, that expensive, elaborate gift so that we could have eternal life. Father, we pray this morning for this time as we seek to worship and elevate the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Father, I pray for David, our instrumentalist, our praise team. Father, we lift up our sound and video teams as well. Lord, as we all together as a body of believers worship the living Lord Jesus, may you be lifted up and edified. Father, that you would receive praise this morning. Father, I pray for Rich, as he'll come to preach this morning, we ask for your hand to be on him. Father, that he would be your mouthpiece and that we would hear your word through him. Father, help us to obey when we hear your word. Lord, we pray today that uh, you would draw men and women of all ages to the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Mark. So praise is the atmosphere of heaven. And so as we begin to praise here, heaven comes down and glory can fill our soul. You ready to praise the Lord?
Let's go to him in prayer. Lord, we want to be still this morning and in our heart of hearts praise you for the great God that you are. Father, we pray that you've got these services today. Lord, that you'd use our brother in a very special way. But Lord, we want to glorify you and we want to see people drawn to you. Forgive us where we fail you and help us to be more like you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and his people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you and you may be seated. Good to have each one of you and it's always good to have guests. And if you're here for the first time, would you just raise your hand? The ushers want to extend to you a welcome packet. We might have a record of your visit. If you'd be so kind as to fill that out, drop it in one of the baskets at the back. It's easy for me to tell who's visiting because they all look so sharp and shiny. They don't look like the rest of y'all. Whoa. Listen, I'm, I'm praying for you women this morning because last night we had a wild game dinner and the men came to me one right after another and asked me to pray with them. Their wife does not ever fix alligator for them. <laughs> and so let that be a lesson, ladies, and uh, make sure you cut the grain with the grain and not against it. <laughs> We had, we fared sumptuously. I read that one time. <laughs> sumptuously. And uh, we had a little bit of everything. It was, it was unbelievable. And then our brother Rich shared with us, and I'm going to let Dave and announce, him, uh, announce him in just a minute, because they spent a lot of time together. And I'm not holding it against either one of them. I, I want you to, to know that. They, they've already made a pact. They're not going to tell on each other. So I did my best. Yesterday, April the 2nd, not April Fool, 
But April the 2nd, Clay and Cormel celebrated their 67th wedding anniversary. Where are y'all at? All the way over there, 67 years. Yeah. When she came up to the front and handed me this announcement, I took it and threw it on the floor. <laughs> but all joking aside, they drive 90 miles one way to come to church here. And so, praise the Lord for them. Brother, we're looking forward to hearing you in just a minute. Here is love, last has the ocean, loving kindness as the flood.
Jesus is waiting. God so loved the world. Well, let's stand together. Stand together and sing this one. Bless the Lord. Be seated and uh, let's sing through that again as the choir makes their way down. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. pleased to have uh, our brother Rich Garza with us today. He um, has a distinguished professional football career in the NFL and then here in the, at the USFL for the San Antonio Gunslingers. And, but what makes uh, Rich impressive is not things of the flesh, but to be known by the Spirit. And uh, this brother, the waters run deep. And the Word of God is implanted in his heart. And you're going to be blessed by the testimony and the preaching of, of my brother Rich. Um, love he and uh, Rich, love you and Jan. And just so thankful for you. You come on and open the Word. Would you all make welcome Rich Garza, please? Thank you, David. Good morning. Great to be here this morning, and I'm going to tell you, we had a time last night out back, and uh, I usually don't eat before I speak, and that was the case last night, but the guys made a nice plate for me and took it home, and I had some of the best sausage I ever had, alligator, and I don't have a clue what some of the other stuff was, <laughs> but I know one thing that wasn't wild game that I ate last night. And that was that awesome peach cobbler. <laughs> I know that wasn't a wild game. Great to be here. Thanks, Brother Dave. Uh, what a blessing to be here today with my brother David G. We go back a long time, like Pastor Butch said. Uh, David and I were blessed to be able to do my father-in-law's funeral. And I was reminisc reminiscing about some of the things that we've been through in ministry down in the down in the patchy courts and in youth camps and other things like that but i remember my my father-in-law's sister from albuquerque when she walked into the house after the funeral and uh 
we had the meal there, and she walked in. I could see her like, like it was yesterday, Aunt Benny. She had both hands across her chest, and she said, I made him my Lord and Savior today. <laughs> Praise God. What a great place to preach the gospel at a, at a funeral. Boy, isn't this a great passage? As my brother was reading it this morning, I was just uh, just going over this this John 12, and I know David told me that Pastor Butch is preaching through John. Folks, take notes. John is an awesome passage of Scripture. Love the gospel. Love the gospel of John. And you know, as I was thinking about today, you know, Jesus said in Second Corinthians. He called us ambassadors. You know, I made mention to the guys last night, those Corinthians, before they received Jesus, they were a wild bunch, man. You couldn't even mention the things that they were doing in their religious services at the church today. That's why he said to them in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Corinthians, you were once homosexuals and adulterers and fornicators. You were once liars and cheaters. But then he said, my favorite verse in the whole Bible, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If any man or woman be in Christ, they're new creations, new creatures. Something the world has never seen before. If any man or woman be in Christ, they're new. Old things are passed away. Behold, everything is become new. And then in that same passage in 2 Corinthians 5, he says, now we've become his ambassadors. And we all know what an ambassador does, right? He takes the word from his king, his president, the leader of his country, and he takes that word where? Into a foreign land. The world is not our home, folks. And here's the word that he's given us to take to the foreign land. Be reconciled to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I'm the way. I'm not one of the ways. I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. No man, no woman, no boy, no girl will go to heaven but through faith in me. Folks, the world that you and I live in today, our families, our neighbors, our coworkers, they need to hear the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel, the good news. And we've got a promise from Isaiah that says this, that God's word will never come back void. It'll never come back empty. What a promise. What a promise. 2 Corinthians 13, 8, the love of the word of God will never fail. Every time I do a wedding and COVID has given me three daughter-in-laws in the last two years. <laughs> I've married my three boys and my <clears throat> son, Rich the Third, is here with us with his wife, Haley, and her grandparents, Mr. and Mrs. Moore. And, I, and every time I marry someone, including my three boys, I always do the 1 Corinthians 13, but I always start with that verse I just quoted, verse 8, that this love, this agape love, this sacrificial love, matter of fact, congratulations to that couple over yonder. Amen. Praise God. The love, the agape love, never fails. What a promise. It never fails. When we're having hiccups, struggles in our marriages and our relationships with co-workers and family, we got, you ever heard that in football, we've heard that so many times and you guys and ladies that play sport, played sports, play sports, you get yourself stuff handed to you on the weekend. You know what the coaches Message is going to be Monday morning, right? We got to get back to what? Fundamentals, basics. There was a song. You remember that song years ago? 
We got to get back to the basics of life, right? Back to fundamentals. What a promise to married folks, to all of us as believers. Agape love, sacrificial love, never fails. Never fails. We come back to patience and long suffering and thinking the best of a person in their present circumstance. God has given us the word of reconciliation. In our world in 2022, they need to know the word of God. You know, I don't know about y'all, but the Lord's word tells us to pray for our leaders. I don't know if you know that. The word of God says to pray for our leaders. Pray for them. They're pitiful. <laughs> they love money. They love power. There's not a sincere bone in their body. The word of God says pray for our leaders. And there's a passage of scripture. This is just a little you know, beginning. It's just been all I thought about even, you know the way it is, Butch, man. You, the Lord gives you so many scripture, man. Which one, which one are we going to share with this group today? But that Matthew 18 is a sober, sober, sober scripture. Jesus says this, Matthew 18, 6. Better that a millstone be tied around your neck. And this is not the millstone that the guy who sharpened the tools pumped and sharpened the tool. No, the millstone that he's talking about at 18 is the one the donkey had to pull. Smashed the grain. He said better. Everybody say better. Better that that millstone be tied around your neck, thrown into the deep of the deep where there's no shoreline visible and no, it's a bottomless sea. Better that those two things happen to you that's going to happen to you that cause one of these little ones that believe in me to stumble. Drug dealers, traffickers. Teaching our kindergarten, first, second, whatever. You know, they're, they're passing a law for in Florida just to stop it at third grade. It should never be taught in our schools. God doesn't make mistakes, folks. Psalm 139 says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Marriage is one man, one woman. It's in the book. His word never changes. Psalm 119, 89, it's settled in heaven. It's refined seven times. You can't add to it, and you can't take away from it. It's perfect, and it's going to be settled in 2022 like it's going to be settled in 2032. It never changes. Why? It's why we need to continue to give people the word of of God because it won't come back empty. But ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, we've got to know it, man. Just like any other business, you're a car salesman, you sell some other type of widget, the more you know about that car, the more you know about the bells and whistles of that vehicle and that widget, the more you know, the easier it's going to be for you to be able to tell other people about that car. We've got to know the Word of God. Look into this passage with me. This passage, beautiful passage in John 12. Because I'm just going on. But I want to get to the text. Because I'm going to tell you, this is going to knock somebody out today. And knock me out. Brother Floyd, it's a great passage of Scripture. And my brother who wrote, read and prayed for us, beautiful prayer. If anybody takes notes, it's my title for this passage of Scripture, Jesus' Last Crusade. Because I'm going to tell you, chronologically, this Scripture, after this Scripture, John 13, Jesus is going to wash the disciples' feet. 
He's going to have the Lord last supper with the disciples. He's going to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. He's going to pray. He's going to pray. He's going to pray. Blood's going to come out of his forehead. He's going to go to the cross for you and for, uh, for me and Mother Teresa and the Pope and every man, woman, boy, and girl that followed after Adam and Eve. And then he's going to go to the cross, and then he's going to be raised in three days. This is la Jesus' last crusade. This is his last shot at the masses. And the reason we know this is look at verse 44. Jesus cried out. There was no microphones at that time. They used to get on a boat so the ward could go across the water. He cried out, and he wanted the world that he knew, the world that was there, the people that he was speaking to, that there was going to be no excuses. No excuses. He summed up his 33 years, his three years of earthly ministry in this passage of Scripture. No excuses. And the three things that he wanted the world to know, I believe, is the three things that he wants our world to know. Our neighbors. I was thinking of this driving this morning. I was just thinking of the cross. And one of my favorite books, other than the Bible, I would say it's top three. Dave, I don't know if you remember that little wrote book called Calvary Road by Roy Houston. That book will knock you out. But there's one by A.W. Pink called The Seven Sayings of the Savior on the Cross. And I was thinking of that book today. I was thinking about the thieves on the cross. And I was thinking about my neighbors. One family, praise God, we've led them to the Lord. But on the other side, she grew up there her whole life. She said she's an agnostic. I, I don't even really know what that means. But you think of the thief on the cross. One said, I'm a sinner. He's God. He's Lord. Remember me when you go into the kingdom. And the other one could not believe, did not believe death sentence. The world wants us to know this in our heart, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, and he wants us to share it. Jesus is our role model, folks. Jesus is our role model. Ephesians 5, 1 says, be an imit imitators of God rather than man. I knocked the congregation out one time when David Robinson was, David Robinson was in his hey, heyday. I told the whole congregation, is David Robinson, your kid's standard, you got a low standard. David was just shaking his head. <laughs> Jesus Christ is our role model. 1 John 2, 6 says, if you say you're a believer in Jesus, you'll walk and you'll talk in the manner that he talked. And Jesus got his fingernails dirty, folks. He didn't sit on a throne and tell us what to do like those old Pharisees did. Jesus got his fingernails dirty. Agape love, he washed Judas's feet. He washed Judas's feet. Man, I just can't stand talking to her. You know, I just can't stand talking to him. And he washed Judas's feet. He showed us how to do it. He showed us how to love. That book I was talking about, Seven Sayings of the Savior on the Cross, Jesus just got hit with the cat of nine tails 39 times. They did a study on the dead cow. Before they got the 39 whips, the dead cow's insides were totally exposed. If anybody could have an excuse for not taking care of his earthly responsibility, it'd be Jesus. But you remember what he said on the cross? Woman, your son. Son, your mother. You know, sometimes over these 39 years, traveling and speaking. 
I just don't have time to call my mom tonight. I'm too busy for the Lord. Jesus showed us how to do it, folks. Jesus showed us how to do it. Literally a piece of shredded meat on the cross, and he still took care of his earthly responsibility. Jesus never called Mary mother. You read in the scripture, God doesn't have a mother. He called her woman. It was a term of endearment. He said to John, the beloved apostle, take care of my mom. Take care of my earthly responsibility. Jesus shows us how to do it, folks. He shows us how to love. You know, Jesus paid his taxes. Remember he told Peter, go fish. And when you catch the fish, my tax bunny's going to be in his mouth. And yours is going to be there too. Jesus showed us how to do it. He showed us how to treat people. He showed us how to serve. He showed us how to love. He showed us how to take care of our earthly responsibility. Jesus obeyed the civil law, but he didn't obey that ceremonial junk that those Pharisees lorded over the people. 600 man-made commandments and put it on top of the 10 commandments and lorded over the people. That's why Jesus is say in Matthew eleven twenty eight, come to me. I'll rest your soul. All you were weary had nothing to do with their 40-hour job. It was the spiritual yoke that was on them, that was heavy. They were trying to do Imagine every time you had a spit spat with your wife, you had to kill, go down and kill something. Man, I would have been worn that path out, man. He said, come to me, all you are weary. You're doing all this religiosity, burning this incense. Man-made rituals, man-made sacraments, but the guilt of your sin is still on your shoulder. He said, come to me, I'll rest your soul. Then he said, take my yoke and be a disciple, be a learner. Let me get to this text. John 12, 44, Jesus cried out, cried out, and he said, he who believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me has seen him who sent me. You remember Philip said, show me the Father. He said, Philip, haven't I been with you so long? Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Here's the first thing that Jesus wanted the world to know, that there'll be no excuses. There'll be no excuses. It's his last crusade, his last shot at the masses. He wanted the world to know these three things. And here is Roman numeral one. Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, God with us. John 10, 30, he said, the Father and I are what? One. Again, he told Philip, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Jesus I'm sure Butch was all over it when he taught on it. John 1.1, 1, 1. in the beginning was the Word, capital W. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And then you drop down to 14, that Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Emmanuel, God with us. Every religion on the every false religion on the face of the earth denies the deity of Christ. I don't care what ism you tell me about. One says it was like Esau and Jacob. One went one, one way, one went the other way. Jesus and the devil were brothers. Come on. One said he was created. They knock on our doors on Saturday. Every ism on the face of the earth denies the deity of Christ, that Jesus is God. I was telling the guys, whatever it takes to memorize Scripture. I'm sorry, I come out of a sports background, and numbers were a big thing to me. I played nose and nose against a guy, number 75, with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Some of you might remember a guy named Mean Joe Green. 
I remember that number. I had, I had nightmares about that number. <laughs> Here's a verse you got to know. And there might be some old, 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 used to be poker players in the room. First John, three deuces. First John, three deuces, whatever it takes, folks to memorize the scripture, that word I've hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. First John 2.22, who's a liar, John says. Who is a liar? The one who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Christ is not Jesus' last name. It's his title. Messiah is the Hebrew. Christ is the Greek. Anointed one. Who is a liar? The one who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He says, 1 John 2.22, he's an anti. What does anti mean? Against. He's against Christ. And then he says this, you can't have the Father without the Son. And you can't have the son without the father. We all know people, oh, oh man, I, I, I believe in God. I believe in God. But this Jesus stuff, 1 John 2, 22 and 23. You can't have one without the other, folks. Elohim is the biblical word, the plural name for God. I was telling the guys last night about a time in prison with a Muslim. He never saw that verse in Genesis 1. Where Jehovah said, let's make man and women in my image. No, let's make man and women in our image. He received the Lord that day. He had never saw that before. First thing that Jesus wanted the world to know. And he wants our world to know it too, folks. He's God. And because he's God... That goes into Roman numeral 2. Verse 46, I have come as light unto the world. And here's, here's that great word, whosoever. Whosoever. Anybody whosoever here today? Amen. Whosoever. And whosoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not believe, I don't judge him. For I didn't come to judge the world, but I came to save the world. Jesus is the Greek for Joshua, the Hebrew. And Joshua is what theologians call a type of Christ. The ark is a type of Christ. Noah and his family went into the ark and they were saved. Joshua took the people into the promised land. Jesus is the Greek. Whoever receives Jesus by faith will go to heaven when they die. Jesus said, I didn't come to judge. Revelation said, when he comes back, he's coming to judge. He'll be riding that white horse, right? But he came the first time as a savior. Jesus means Savior, Rescuer. And that's why it had to be Roman numeral one first that Jesus is God, right? Because it had to be a sacrifice without spot or blemish, right? And we all know Romans 3.23 says, A-double-L, A-double-L, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It couldn't be God, man on the cross. It had to be the God-man on the cross. Because it had to be a sacrifice without spot or blemish. And all men and women are sinners. That's why he had to come. Live the perfect life. And here's the, the great thing about the cross. And we that have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Sins are forgetting, forgetting, forgiven. Yesterday, today, and the ones tomorrow. But the other thing is that we received Jesus' 30 spotless 
sinless years when we receive him as our Lord and Savior. We receive his perfection. That's why Ephesians says we believers were seated already in the heavenlies. We seat in the heavenlies. And, and a guy preached, I mean, uh, prayed today. He, he said a great thing. He prayed a great thing. I don't know if you heard it. He said, we don't come to you as judge. See, when we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we came to us. He, he was a judge. But now, as believers, we come to him as Abba. See, there's a teaching going around in the in in the in the church churches today. Maybe you some have heard it. Well, we as believers, we don't have to confess our sin anymore, because my sins have been forgiven yesterday, today, and forever. So why do I have to confess my sin? When we received them, that was judge. Just that's why we're justified now, right? Just as if we never sinned. But how many know? Christians still sin. Now, we're not sinless, but we ought to sin less. That's how you know you're a believer, right? So we come to him. He told the Ephesians. I don't know how these folks miss it. Ephesians says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, right? First John's written to believers, if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive your sin, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We come to him now as believers, as Abba, Daddy. We don't want to offend you, Daddy. So we come confessing our sin as believers. As believers. Tombstone. Justified, right? The day we were born again. And now all of us are in that dash sanctified he's making us more like him and when we leave here we'll be glorified forever and ever and ever Jesus wanted the world to know and he wants us to tell the foreign land that Jesus is God and he was the perfect sacrifice, the Savior. And whosoever believes, receives the words appropriate, John 1, 12, for as many as appropriate Jesus, take them to yourself, call them your very own at a specific time in a person's life. That's why David could say in Psalm 23, he's not just a shepherd, he's my shepherd. He's my shepherd. He's my, I'm sure most of you could testify. I was brought up in, in a church growing up. I knew the Good Friday, the Easter story, Christmas story. I knew about that young boy that beat the giant with a sling. But it wasn't until April 30th, 1983, before a game in Tampa Bay, Florida, a third-year professional football. I had everything the world said I was going to have, but I was not a believer in Jesus Christ. I knew about him. You've heard the illustration. I mentioned a guy's name to you today. Most of you know about David Robinson. But we don't know David. Most of us don't know him. And that's the way it was me. I, I knew about the Lord, but I didn't know him personally. One of the best illustrations, I think, is the Christmas gift under the tree, wrapped in gold, gold ball on it, our names in the right-hand corner. Someone paid for that gift, went over an icy bridge, saved their nickels and dimes to buy you that gift. It's under the tree. Your name's on it. But that gift doesn't do you one bit of good to what happens. You receive the gift. You open it. You appropriate it. Put the cap on. Put the gold on. Put the watch on. Put the shoes on. The gift has to be received. My wife's grandfather lived to be 97. But when he was 94, 
He finally bent down and received that gift. My mom and dad love it every Easter. This year will be 32 East, 33 Easter's ago. My mom and dad received the gift. It was under the tree. But a gift has to be received. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believes in Jesus will not perish, receives Jesus, appropriates Jesus, takes him to your own by faith, call him your very own, will spend eternity in heaven. And then here's the third point. And this is the one that really knocked me out when I came across this. Verse 48. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has one that will judge him. Listen to this. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has one that will judge him on the last day. The word that I spoke will judge him on the last day. Folks, do you realize, do you realize why the devil, the world, the world system, the people who follow after the devil and the world system, religiosity, wants to keep us from what the Word of God says? People say, I got one of those red letter, red letter Bibles. And the whole Bible's written in red, folks. <laughs> Not John 3.16, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scriptures inspired by God and beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction and instruction that the man or woman of God will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You and when I got to, we're going to be judged by what God's word says. As believers and non-believers, we're going to be judged on what we've done with our money over all these years how we've done our marriages over all these years. The words that we've spoken all these years. There's a judgment seat for believers, folks. I used to tell my children when they're young, when they were young, about heaven and the rewards I used to say, man, imagine the drone a birthday party for your mama. And all our friends would come and relatives would come. And one would give your mama keys to a Mercedes Benz. And another would give her a mink stole. And give her all these gifts. And then they would say, son and daughter, what you got for your mom? We as believers, we're going to be judged by what God says. It ain't about, that's the way mom and them used to do our do the marriage. No, it ain't about what mom and them's talked about in our marriage. It has to do with how God talks about we do our marriages. How we do our family. Our relationship with other brothers and sisters. I mean, this was one of them too, Butch, that John 13 passage where Jesus gets done washing his disciples' feet. And he said, the world will know that you're my disciples by the love you have for the world. No, because of the love, the way you love each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. He said, I give you a new commandment. The old commandment was love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if I feel like cutting my neighbor's grass, that's great. I love to cut grass. But when he said go clean my neighbor's toilet, that was a little bit something different, man. You know, I love my neighbor as myself the way I like to do it. But Jesus came on the scene and he said, I give you a new commandment. Have a fervent love for brothers and sisters in Christ. Reach 
for brothers and sisters in Christ. You look at that first church in Acts 2. They were selling what they own and giving to the brothers and sisters who had need in the body. They were breaking bread together. They were praying together. They were coming to church together. The last verse in Acts 2. Many. Everybody say many. Many were added to the church daily, those who were being saved. See, loving brothers and sisters in Christ, loving brothers and sisters in Christ is evangelistic. The world will know you're my disciples because of the love you have for them. No, because of the love you have for brothers and sisters in Christ. Romans says, above all things, have a love for brothers and sisters in Christ. Galatians says, consider, number one, primo, your love for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Fervent love, Peter says, means that stretching love, sacrificial agape love. We're going to be judged by what God's word says, ladies and gentlemen. There will be one, he said, that will judge a man or woman in the last day. The word that I spoke, because what I spoke were not my words, he says. They were God's words. They were the Father's words. And his words are eternal. Do you see why? They're trying to keep this book and the teachings out of our schools, trying to take in God we trust off the dollar bill, trying to take the manger scenes from the city hall, anything having to do with God, anything having to do with the word of God. Do you see why we go all the way back to the beginning of this talk? He's given us the words of reconciliation. It's up to us, ladies and gentlemen. We have the words of reconciliation. They're in this book. But we got to know it. I'm sorry. The scripture doesn't say read the Bible. It says study the Bible. It says study. Know it. Believe it. And then we'll be able to share it. Talk to others about it. 1 Peter 3.15, sanctify the Lord in your life. Live like a believer. Then be ready to give an answer. Francis of Sissy could say all he wants about, I'm going to use works as the gospel. Scripture says faith comes by hearing the words concerning Jesus, the gospel, the good news. Let your light so shine in front of men that they see your good works and glorify the fathers in heaven. First Peter 3.15 again. Sanctify the Lord in your life. Live like a believer. Then be ready to give an answer. And here's the way we give our answer. Meekness. Power under control. Secure. I don't have to hit anybody over the head with a 1611 King James Bible. I know what God has done in my life. I know what the word of God says. What did Romans say? The kindness of the Lord is what brings you into the kingdom. The mercy of the Lord, that's what 23-23, Michael Jordan, LeBron James number, Matthew 23-23, the woe chapter. He said, woe to you Pharisees, you hypocrites. You forgot the weightier issues of the law. What were they? Compassion, mercy, justice. We share the good news in meekness, security, and respect. Why respect? Because I was once like him. I don't think I mentioned this now that I think about it when I was talking about praying for our leaders. And I forgot the most important part when we pray for our leaders. And all those things I said about our leaders, I was once like them. And if God did it in me, he could do it in them. And sometimes it looks so bleak. How do we get to them? Armed cars, behind gated communities, can't take a question, won't won't visit with people. But I know this word, ladies and gentlemen, every Christmas I know this word. 
The angel told Mary, with God, with God, maybe it'll be a grandson that went to VBS. Maybe it'll be one of his servants that work at the White House or the Congress or at the mayor's house or the governor's house, filled with the Spirit, will go to him, go to her. I'm talking mayors, governors, House of Representatives, Congress, Senator, President, Cabinet. Pray for our leaders. I was once like them, he told the Corinthians, the same thing. And I'm going to tell you, folks, you do your research. Those Corinthians were a wild bunch, man. And God said, you were once like them. He could do it. With God, all things are possible. Give folks the word of God. It doesn't come back void. It doesn't come back empty. And the greatest thing about Scripture is that old verse David was singing about. The number one verse. For God so loved the world. He just didn't love us. He so loved us. That he gave us what we needed. Some of you probably received that Christmas card. I do every year, one or two or three of them. If God knew we needed more money, he would have sent a banker. If God knew we needed more education, he would have sent a teacher. But God knew we needed forgiveness, redemption. So he gave us what we needed. He sent us a savior. And whosoever, whosoever, whosoever appropriates Jesus, receives him, will not perish, won't go to hell. Jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven. Won't perish, but have everlasting life. What a God. What a plan. This might be a little something for your faith sack, if you will, in witnessing. People said, Mr. Garza, that's a very unloving statement that Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. I tell them this. You ever gone to the dentist with an unbelievable toothache? Your jaw feels like it's going to crack in half. Or go to the doctor with some other part of your body, just an unbelievable, excruciating pain. And if you went to that doctor and said, Doc, I need some help, and she would say, I'll just go home. Anything mama's got around the house, grandma's got across town, neighbor's got across the street, take some of that medicine, maybe you'll get well. You'd never go to that dentist again, would you? No, because when you got a pain in your body, you want a specific remedy for that pain. It would be very unloving for God to put us on earth and tell us, figure out how to get to heaven. And if you don't figure it out right, you're in a big heap of trouble because you're going to burn forever and ever 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 in a place called hell. That's not love, guys, ladies. That's not love. Love is, I'm the potter. You're the clay. I created you. I'm God. I know how I want to be worshipped. I know what's best for you. I got a plan. I love you so much. I got one plan. I'm not having you try to figure out. I got a plan. I'm sending my son. Live a perfect life. Take your place on the cross. And whosoever believes in him will spend forever and ever with us in heaven. Will you bow your head right where you're at with me? There might be someone here this morning. You're sitting there just the way I sat. 39 years ago now, in Tampa, Florida, in Buccaneer Stadium. 
didn't have a clue. Knew about God, but never made him personal. Never made him personal. Oh, I, I knew I was a sinner. I sure enough knew I was a sinner. But I didn't know what to do with it. Until I heard that man speak that day before that game in Tampa, Florida. Whosoever receives Jesus, appropriates Jesus, takes him to himself or self and call him their very own Lord and Savior. If that's you today, sir, ma'am, you're sitting there the same way I sat, saying this, it's got to be God. Because back then I said, I'm 25 years old. I went to five years of college in one of the biggest cities in America, Philadelphia. I tried everything the world had to offer times two. And nothing made me feel the way I was feeling that day in that chapel. I knew it was God. And there might be someone this morning. You know it's God, man. You know it's him. You never felt like this before in your life. You see it clearly now. You're a sinner. He took your place. He's not one of the ways. He's the way to get to heaven. It makes so much sense. That's really love. Figuring out in many ways is not love. One way is love. Just like that dentist who would give us the cure for that toothache. He gave us the cure for our sin. That you today in front of, I'm going to tell you, I've been a lot of places. 47 states, Canada, Mexico, Barbados, South Africa, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv. 5,000 schools, 26 years with the MBA. 500 penitentiaries, death row, under bridges to with the President of the United States in 1988. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you something. There's some love in this room today. There's some love in this room today. There's a place that you can make a public confession of the Lord Jesus Christ. It'd be in this room right now today. We'd love to pray with you. Butch is here. I'm going to make my way down. Nail it down with the Lord today. Nail it down. Say yes to him. Father, help us. Help us, Lord. Help all of us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand this morning? God's Holy Spirit permeates the place, dealing with every heart, mind, soul, desiring to draw you unto himself. On that first verse, why not let go and let God have his way as we sing. Just as I am without Lord, I'm believing your word. But that I'm claiming thy your promise. Was shed for I've me heard your word and I'm believing your word. And I'm coming today. Come to thee, oh God's speaking to your heart. Will you let him have his way? God, I come. I come. Instruments continue to play with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. We're not going to drag out the invitation much as I'd like to, but you can't be more evangelistic than the Holy Spirit of God. And if Jesus' love can't draw you, then nothing can. Then nothing can. Some of you need to Receive the Lord and be saved and know it 
and leave this place excited about the Lord Jesus. Others who have been saved, you need to identify with Christ. It's as simple as that. Baptism isn't a suggestion, it's a command for those who have been saved. And other of you have been saved, you've been identified, but you don't have a church home. If this is it, we want you to know that you're welcome. But we don't ask you to join. It's the Holy Spirit of God that will draw you. And today he'll speak in a still, small voice. He doesn't have to shout. He deals with your heart. And he causes you to know the truth and to come. One other verse, this verse for you. Just as Just like you I are, you're am coming. And you're stepping out, and God will take you the rest of the way. To rid my soul of one I'm believing you, Lord. To thee, and I'm coming. whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God. seated for just a moment. Brother Rich, thank you, brother, for the word today. <laughs> Have you been blessed? Blessed by the word. Amen. He's not near as pretty as I am or Dave, but, <laughs> but we're blessed by the word. And I'm not in the pulpit, so I can tell a little story from down here, see. Good to be in his house. And Mark, you bring us the announcements, and we'll be blessed by them, I'm sure. Yeah, I was telling my class this morning that if I had to line up against me and Joe Green, I'd call in sick on that day. <laughs> what a blessing. Thank you, Rich. Um, have some announcements this morning. Just wanted to highlight. First off, we always want to thank our guests for visiting with us today, for being a part of our worship service. Uh, we're delighted that you came. Um, that's why we're here. And uh, if there's any way we can minister to you or your family, make sure the, to indicate that on your guest card uh, before you place it in the back on, on your way out. So thank you for being here with us today. Uh, just a few things to, to highlight coming up. Next Sunday evening, there's another opportunity in the arena uh, to pray for the Easter uh, musical that's coming up at 5.30. Young families, don't forget about the camp out in his arena coming up here in April. So there's uh, some flyers in the back that will give you some information on that. And please uh, text Melissa if you're planning to, uh, to participate in that so we can kind of get a, a count. Uh, prayer gathering tonight in the fellowship hall at 5 p.m. Everyone's welcome uh, to come and pray. Uh, someone indicated that on the screen there was a an announcement about Alzheim Alzheimer's. I have a hard time with that word. I don't know why. Alzheimer's uh, caregiver support group tomorrow, but it's not meeting tomorrow, okay? Just so you know, um, that's not happening. Also today, right after the service and next Sunday after the service, we're going to have a wardrobe fitting for those who are in the Easter musical, and it's going to be over here in, this, in the outbuilding. It's got number six on it. I guess it's number six because of man or something, numbers. Um, you can enter on either side, the north or the south. Uh, you probably don't, I know, you don't know north or south, right? I mean, so when you look at the building, you can enter on the right or the left. Is that better? Yeah. So if you want stairs, a lot of stairs go left. If you want a ramp, go right. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Today, 12 to 3, and next Sunday, 12 to 3. It's really important if you're in the Easter musical that you have a wardrobe. I mean, you don't, you don't want, I mean, they can, you can go with shorts and Crocs, but it won't, it won't have near the impact that uh, the wardrobe will have. Um, and next Sunday, No Man Left Behind, 8 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, man, don't forget about the upcoming Highland Lakes. Pardon me? What did I say? Oh, sorry. Saturday. This coming Saturday, uh, No Man Left Behind. And, and don't forget about the upcoming Highland Lakes uh, Men's Conference. Do you want me to read more of the announcements, or does that, that pretty much gets it? All right. Thank you for your time. Uh, 
I love the expression on some of your faces. Your eyes went. <laughs> well, let's stand together. And uh, Kent, would you come and uh, close us out in prayer, and then we'll sing our sing our way out. Lord, we, we do thank you for this day, and, and thank you for your powerful words, and uh, your words cut like a two-edged sword, and I know for me and perhaps others here, it, uh, we were admonished to be more studious in your word. And <clears throat> thank you for your faithful servants, and Heavenly Father, I, I ask that you help us to go forth this week in your word and and in the to be attuned to your holy spirit and may we be salt and light for you and and uh, keep us safe and, and uh, help us to meet together here according to your will in jesus holy name i ask these things amen Yeah.